Yeah. All right, everybody. Our next speaker is a gentleman by the name of Andrew Moylan. He's the director of government affairs for the National Taxpayers Union. So he's going to talk to us a little bit about a few things here. He's also appeared on such publications as the Wall Street Journal, Washington Times, Investor Business Daily, and Forbes Magazine. He's a graduate of Michigan, University of Michigan, and degree of political science. And he's uh, previously served in the Center of Educational Freedom at the Cato Institute. He's going to talk to us a few things today. Please introduce uh, and join me. Help me to uh, what? Uh, what do we got? Uh, help him. Just show up here, Andrew. Come on up here. Morning, everybody. Glad to see a nice docile crowd here this morning. Nice and tame, right on the front lawn of the Capitol. Now, my name's Andrew Moylan. I work for the National Taxpayers Union. It is the only union that you can trust. And I have the best job on the face of the planet because I get paid to complain about taxes. Now, let me, let me start this off by asking you guys an uncomfortable question. How many people here are willing to admit that they make more than $250,000 a year? Give me a chair, raise your hand. We got one guy, he's, he's brave. Now, the rest of us, make less than that and consider ourselves middle class. Well, I got good news and bad news for you. The good news is that President Obama made a, quote, firm pledge that none of your taxes would go up. Sounds great, right? Now, I got a whole lot of bad news, so bear with me. The bad news is that that's not true. Just about everything that you do, that you use, that you see on a regular basis you're gonna see higher taxes on. Let's start out talking about cap and trade. There was a sign about it right in front here. Now, if you think that an energy tax worth almost $4,000 a year is a bad idea, let me hear an amen. Yeah. Come on, let me hear that again. Yeah. That's more like it. Now, this bill was 1,500 pages by the time it showed up on the House floor last Friday. And 300 of those pages were added at 3 o'clock in the morning when all of us were sound asleep. To this day, nobody who works in that building has read the entire bill or knows every single thing that's in it. This is the country we live in today. Now, cap and trade is something that's going to raise taxes, essentially, on the energy that you use every day. Did anybody use any energy to get here today? Does anybody have a, an outlet at home that they plug into once in a while to read? Exactly. So, bad news. Your energy taxes are going up. I got, I got more bad news. This time it's about health care. With health care, they want to institute a value-added tax, basically a national sales tax, on top of the income tax system that we have today. If, if you think that's a bad idea, let me hear an amen. I love it. I feel like I'm in church today. Now, to do that, they'd have to have a VAT between 6 and 10%. So that sales tax that you all love paying back home in your home states, see that on the federal level on top of it as well. Now, here's one that I know is going to fire people up. Does anybody here like beer? How about wine? We got some wine drinkers in the house today. All right, for, for the kids, soda? Anybody like Coke or Pepsi? I got bad news for you there, too, because they've proposed raising taxes on each and every one of those things in order to pay for health care. Now, how many of you have a car? That's something people are probably willing to admit, right? There you go. Most people here have a car. Obama's transportation secretary's former Republican representative, Ray LaHood, incidentally one of two Republicans in the entire history of the National Taxpayers Union's congressional rating to get an F. So the man that got an F grade proposed what he thought was a great idea. Let's base your tax burden in your car based on how many miles you drive, not how much gas you have. Does anybody notice the problem with this? The first problem is, of course, it means more money for them. Because why would they do it if it didn't mean more money for them? The second thing is, you would have a GPS chip in your car that would tell the government exactly how many miles you drove. Does anybody think that's a good idea? If you think that's a bad idea, let me hear an amen. amen. Now, how about cigarettes? We probably got some smokers in the house today too, right? We got a couple of people, the, the lone remaining few. We got one right in front. Now, this one's already done. Your taxes already went up. 62 cents a pack. So unless you make over $250,000, Barack Obama lied to you. Now, 
the, the problem with this is there's exactly one person in this country who makes more than $250,000 and smokes cigarettes, and he lives right up that street, and his name is Barack Obama. What about, what about cell phones? Anybody got a cell phone here today? There we go. How many of those are paid for by our employer? I've got one in my pocket right now. Because of the shenanigans that people in this building do all day long, I have to have this thing strapped to my hip all the time, and my employer pays for it. Well, the IRS wants to raise taxes on people who have employer-provided cell phones. So what, what's next? Are we going to have people taxing every sip of coffee that you have in the office? Are they going to shake you down for office supplies that you might have snuck home with? You take a notepad, they're going to tax you on that? This is the country that we live in today, and it's the country that we'll live in if we don't change it right now, right here, today. Now, I know you, you rich guys must have thought I was going to let you off the hook here, but there's a problem, because all the other taxes are going to be raised on you. The top income tax rates raised back up to Clinton era levels. Itemized deductions, capital gains and dividends, social security taxes, the state taxes up to 45%. If you die, 45% of that wealth will go to the government if it's over a certain level. If you think that's a bad idea, let me hear an amen.